In this lesson, I'm going to show you the mechanism for the aldol reaction. Near the end of the video, we'll tackle some retrosynthesis, looking at products that could be formed by the aldol reaction and thinking backwards about the starting materials. Let's begin by looking at the aldol reaction of acetone with itself. So we have our two molecules of acetone here. I'm coloring them differently so I can show you in the product where the carbon atoms end up. We can treat our solution of acetone with either base or acid. And our product will be an enone. We have this purple part coming from one of our molecules of acetone, these three blue carbons coming from the other, and our new bond is shown in red. Let's look at how this reaction works beginning with the base catalyzed mechanism. Here's our first molecule of acetone. Because of the dipole in this molecule and the resonance we can draw, the hydrogen atoms on this carbon here are somewhat acidic. So our base can come in and deprotonate this hydrogen atom. And I'm going to show this bond becoming a lone pair on the carbon atom right here. This step forms an enolate. This enolate has a resonance form, and that really explains why this can even form in the first place. Remember, if a molecule has resonance, it's stabilized. We can push these electrons in to make a double bond here and push these electrons up onto oxygen. Our contributing resonance form looks like this. It is fine to show either resonance form of this compound because they both contribute to the overall structure of the enolate. So a bit of the acetone that's in solution that hasn't undergone the enolization reaction can act as our electrophile. And we're going to get our new bond at this carbon. The arrow pushing looks like this. The electrons push down from oxygen. Our double bond can reach out and attack this electrophilic carbon atom. And then we push the electrons up onto oxygen. This gives our next intermediate. Now, sodium hydroxide is typically a solution in water. And also in this first step, when we grab the proton, we made a molecule of water. So I'm going to add that into our equation right here. And now we can use this molecule of water to protonate the alkoxide we just made. We'll attack the hydrogen atom of the water, pushing the electrons onto oxygen. And we'll form this beta hydroxy carbonyl compound. And I just want to go back for a second and just label our enolate here. Okay, so we have another carbonyl in this compound. We also have this OH group that's inductively pulling electrons. So the hydrogen atoms that are on this carbon are even a bit more acidic than our starting material. Now notice in our product, we don't have this OH. We have a double bond that results from elimination of this OH group. And you might be saying to yourself, OH minus is a poor leaving group. The reaction that's going to happen next is an E1CB reaction. And this is how it works. Another molecule of hydroxide can come in deprotonating here. This deprotonation gives this anion. And this anion has resonance stabilization with the carbonyl group, much like we had up here. We can show this resonance. And the fact that we have all this negative charge already built up on the molecule will help to push this group out. The departure of OH- is not part of the rate determining step here. And that's what allows this to happen and have hydroxide leave as a leaving group. With the negative charge built up on the molecule, we can push through all these bonds to show how the leaving group gets expelled. And this elimination gives the aldol product and also gives a molecule of hydroxide. If we're looking at this overall reaction, I'm just gonna add right here the molecule of water that we produce in this step. We see that in the first step, we consume hydroxide producing water. We then deprotonate water producing a new molecule of hydroxide, which we use in the next step. However, in this step here, we produce a molecule of hydroxide overall. So this reaction is catalytic. We only need a little bit of hydroxide to get this to go since the hydroxide is regenerated in the end. I mentioned earlier that we could do this reaction under acid catalyzed conditions as well. Let's take a look at that mechanism. Now, the big difference that we're going to see in the base catalyzed versus the acid catalyzed mechanism is the types of intermediates that can form. 
Under basic conditions, we typically have negative charges and neutral compounds interacting. But under acid-catalyzed conditions, well, something negatively charged like this really can't exist with protons floating around in solution. So we have to be careful of the intermediates that we form. So we can't just deprotonate this compound in acid. Remember, we get a negative charge here. So we have a different first step that activates this carbonyl compound. I'm going to represent our acid as the hydronium ion, and what's going to happen next is this carbonyl is going to become protonated. The arrow pushing looks like this and gives an oxonium ion intermediate and a molecule of water. Now with this protonated, we have a good resonance form that puts a carbocation right here, inductively pulling electron density from this proton. So it is straightforward under acid catalyzed conditions for water to do the deprotonation. And we can show arrows pushing toward oxygen, neutralizing that positive charge. So under acidic conditions, our reactive species is going to be this enol. Now we need to react our second carbonyl with the enol. But we can't have it in this form like we had above because the attack gave a negative charge. Instead, we'll start with a molecule of protonated acetone. The arrow pushing will be analogous to what we have up here, except that we'll form this positively charged intermediate. Once we form this intermediate, water can deprotonate here, forming a new enol. The arrow pushing looks like this, and we'll get this intermediate. Now we don't want to push out anything with a negative charge like we did here. So we'll need to protonate this oxygen to make it into a good leaving group to leave under acidic conditions. If we protonate, it can leave as neutral water. We can now do our E1CB reaction, forming this charged intermediate that undergoes a deprotonation to form our enone and a molecule of acid. Again, the reaction regenerates our acid and is therefore catalytic. We don't require an entire equivalent of this for the reaction to go. We need just a little bit to get the reaction started. Now, I want to show you how to retrosynthetically analyze the aldol reaction to determine what starting materials are producing the aldol product. This is especially important in the event that they're not the same like we have here with the self-condensation of acetone. Let's examine this enone as our example. So what I like to do is just draw a squiggle through my double bond. Notice that's the new bond that forms up here. And so then I can think about this in two parts. Let's consider this side first. We have our carbonyl here. And the side that enolizes attacks and, and retains the carbonyl group. So this is coming from the side that enolized here. So for the carbonyl containing side, we just need to redraw everything up to the squiggle. Here's our retrosynthetic arrow and this side came from acetone once again. Now to figure out this side, I like to just think about where we split the bond and imagine adding an oxygen atom right back in here where this double bond is. So the starting material for this side looks like this. So see, we're just imagining chopping this bond and adding back in an oxygen right here. Now the conditions up here with hydroxide or aqueous acid, these are equilibrating conditions. Each step I've shown is in equilibrium here. So we form a little bit of our enolate in the first step that goes on to react. This reaction of two different substrates in an aldol is called a crossed aldol. And a crossed aldol under equilibrating conditions can only occur if certain criteria are met. That first criteria is that only one of the starting materials is enolizable. And the second requirement is that the substrate that's not enolizable has to be more reactive. We just saw up here how acetone can react with itself. If this is the more reactive partner in the reaction, it'll just react with itself and not do the crossed aldol with the other substrate. However, this is a ketone and this is an aldehyde. Aldehydes are more reactive due to both steric and electronic factors. So to perform this crossed aldol, we could mix these two together with a drop of base or a drop of acid, and this reaction will proceed to produce this product. Let's look at one more example retrosynthetically. Okay, let's do our analysis. Draw your squiggly line through the double bond, show a retrosynthetic arrow. The side with the ketone is the side that enolizes, so all we have to do here is draw out the ketone without being connected to anything. 
Imagine adding a carbonyl back where we split the bond, and we get these two starting materials. Both of these starting materials contain enolizable protons. This substrate has three right here, and this substrate has some right here and some right here. Under equilibrating conditions, we'll get a complex mixture of products. So we can actually carry out this reaction, but it's going to take a little bit of fancier chemistry. If you're interested in that chemistry, you could check out my video on the crust aldol. Thanks for watching.